my name is John Burke. I'm the Director of Systems Engineering for the Majors with Extreme Networks. I'm here today to talk to you about 1,000 fans. Who's using the stadium Wi-Fi and why? Um, if the slide doesn't give it away, um, about a week ago from this recording, um, we exited probably one of the most advertised uh, international events that we do celebrate every year in February, which is the Super Bowl. Um, we are both the Wi-Fi uh, official Wi-Fi provider and the analytics provider for the NFL. As you can imagine, preparing for a Super Bowl event and Wi-Fi in order to deliver good service takes a bit of effort. Um, so before we get into the fans and using it, let's just talk about that a little bit. So everything leading up to the Super Bowl generally starts about three weeks ahead um, for preparation, on-site, construction activities. Um, about a week ahead, we, the NFL opens up NFL experiences and the media comes on site and they, they show up and they bring all kinds of devices, Wi-Fi devices in there. Um, so certainly as we prepare for the Super Bowl and prepare for that Wi-Fi network, it requires not only a good design, it requires diligence and perseverance to, to hunt down uh, all these Wi-Fi interferers. Um, the NFL actually hosts uh, two days before the Super Bowl event, what they call the, wa the RF War Games. And what that is intended to do is everybody that's, that's going to turn something on, licensed or unlicensed, in the Super Bowl venue, turns everything up during that two-hour period of time. And then they use technicians, either walking around with, you know, for us, Wi-Fi wi technicians, we'll use NetAlly G2 or G3 devices, uh, maybe the Echo Sidekick, um, and even mobile devices to help kind of flush out those interferers and where they are and where they exist in the environment because we already know what should be in the stadium, so we know it doesn't need to be there either. Uh, what we found this year was interesting. Um, you got the normal, you got the usual suspects, the Netgear, the, uh, the cellular hotspots, the Linksys, but what was interesting was a lot of the new devices out of the box come with five gigahertz and eight Wi-Fi enabled, and they broadcast as soon as you unpack them. So Roku TVs, um, TV U-Packs, which a lot of these people don't even know how to use the Wi-Fi on them and aren't using the Wi-Fi, they just broadcast by default. Mevo cameras, super cheap, you know, media people like to bring them on. We had some Microtik routers that we found. Um, those are what the, you know, the, the cashless uh, vending machines. You walk in, you scan your card, you go in, you grab your thing, you, whatever it is you want, and you leave. Those things were, were broadcasting Wi-Fi, as well as some Zcams. So all of the things have to be cleaned up ahead of the Super Bowl so that on game day, it's a nice, clean environment. So let's take a quick look at what that looked like. So game day, you know, obviously the most important day. As we analyze and look at the Wi-Fi usage throughout the game itself, we can note all the high points. And you'll note that there's different high points that we've noted here on the chart in each quarter. So pre-game in each of the quarters and even through the, um, the OT. And you can see that this, the social is kind of the great equalizer. It doesn't matter which team you're in favor of, you're going to use Wi-Fi. And you can see throughout the course of the game, there's certain triggers that happens, whether it be touchdowns, turnovers, um, just big passing plays. Those things will spike up activity on the Wi-Fi network during the Super Bowl event. If we take a look at the history, I'm going to expose a little bit of it here. If you look at Super Bowl 58, you can see that there's, uh, we've got kind of an adoption rate that was 72%. So there's 62,000 seats available at the Super Bowl. If you go back to Super Bowl 48, you can see we were on a 16% adoption rate. So Wi-Fi has come a long way over 11 Super Bowls from 16% adoption rate to 72% adoption rate. And back in 48, the average user uh, per device transmit was 200, 234 megabytes of data where this last Super Bowl was 785 megabytes of data on average per user for that duration of the game. So pretty exciting. We continue to see those trends go upward. You know, adoption rate might level out. I mean, at some point you read a sat reach a saturation point, but certainly data itself, the appetite for that continues. So let's talk about some of the apps. 
So certainly the sports applications are big, big hot in, during the Super Bowl. People are checking things out. They're watching to see what kinds of things or activities going on. And then again, talking about social media, right, the, the great equalizer. It doesn't matter which team you're in favor of. Honestly, it doesn't really matter what sport you are. You want to share that you're there, you're at the event, and you're, it's a little bit of bragging rights. But as you start looking through all that activity, there's another one that's crept up now, which is sports betting. So being able to monitor and analyze that Wi-Fi data now puts a little different burden on the network, right? Because now there's an expectation that's going to be fast, it's going to be reliable, and it's going, to, it's going to do what you want it to do at the time you want to do it. As we evaluate and look through the, the, the entire duration of the game, you can see the spikes in the betting. And, and one, of the, one of the biggest spikes happened in the second quarter after the first touchdown of the game. So people are using Wi-Fi to interact, place their bets, and that's probably the next one. You know, so we've got the social media, we've got the sports, uh, sports sites, but now we've got sports betting. And legalized sports betting really drives those numbers up. So drum roll, this was the, this was the magic number. So uh, you're getting a, a, a preview here because this actually doesn't go public until tomorrow. Um, so, I'm, <laughs> so people in the room here get to see this. Um, but 34.8 terabits of data was transferred during this year's Super Bowl. Um, and that was a record, a uh, new record. The 785 megabits average of data per user was also a new record, 19% year-over-year growth. So fun facts, to put it in perspective, you could stream the Taylor Swift Eras Tour movie 4,000 times, or you could watch Usher's Homecoming album, listen to the Homecoming album 10,500 times, or you could watch 17,400 hours of NFL streaming content. And that would equal the 34 terabytes of data that was transferred during the Super Bowl period. Again, taking a look back, if we look at the history of that from when we started tracking it back at uh, Super Bowl uh, 48 to 58 now, you can see that the trend has always continued upward. We had a little bump in 2020, um, but other than that, the, the, the appetite for data continues to grow and expand um, despite everything. Um, so I expect to see more of that as we, as we move forward into other Super Bowls and, and other venues. Thank you.